Hey, hey, guys. How you doing? Guys, hey, I love you. Hi, welcome to the Wolf Den podcast. How you doing? Well, what you got there, Will? What, what fun I don't think I bought. I don't. I don't think I bought you that strap. I don't think I bought you that camera strap. Care to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was asking Bob right before the show started uh, if he had one of those like fancy peak design camera straps, uh, and I was specifically asking if he has the thinner one, which are for designed for mirrorless cameras, or the thicker one, which is more designed for DSLRs. Uh, and according to Ra uh, Robert, who I must remind you all is frequently wrong, and I have to frequently quote him <laughs> on this very show, uh, he said that I got him one, but I just checked my Amazon history, and I have never bought a Peak I, Design camera strap. I received two for like a birthday or something, and right. I returned one of them. I know. Okay. I mean, James got me one, and I think you. I'm pretty sure you did. It might have been a Best just, Buy purchase. You might have to check Best Buy. Oh man, I hate looking at Best Buy. But I'm pretty sure it was on my wish list, and you both just saw it on my wish list. Probably Best Buy's website sucks. They don't have a good order history. No, they I don't, don't know. And what what's weird about. is we have two separate accounts, but your order history shows up in mine. You, are you getting? <laughs> you getting you, we're getting Facetimed right now. By the way, who is FaceTime should we should we though? join it? Should we join the Facetime? Uh, you wanna? <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is it? What we're doing the podcast? Yeah, we're, we're what is this? We're doing the show, mom. Mom, mom, mom we're, we're live. live. You're live, live on here. the internet I'm right out now. Out here. I'm out of here. <laughs> was this a mistake? Of course it was. <laughs> okay, g goodbye. <laughs> My, I should have shown it on camera. Dad was holding a four pack of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Because of course he was. It is that time. It's that time. Yeah. It's, it's decaf coffee time. Anyway, I have gone through. I have my focus iPhone focus on. So. We got a. We have a lot of uh, crap. Fa lot family of crap drama to get out of the way in the very in very top of the show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hi. Hey, hey. There's a whole chat here, guys. How you doing? <laughs> Sorry, we were ignoring you for a second. We just had some yeah. things we needed to sort out. Uh, I want to give a thank you to all of these people. Uh, Last Colossi for the eight months. Plant for the two months. Happy to support creators like you. You're amazing, and your videos have helped me so much. Bob, I appreciate you. Thank you, Plant, for your support. Uh, Kikoba, thank you for the 32 months. If you could only take one handheld with you to a desert island, which air fryer would it be? My electric kettle has snake on it. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me that, and it is what a it's world stupid. To live in you can call it stupid. Snake on an electric <laughs> kettle. Can it run Doom though? That's the ultimate test. I don't know because you can run Doom in a printer screen. So why not your electric kettle? You sound lower now. All of a sudden, I di I literally did nothing. Uh, Erebus, thank you for the two months. Apparently, I've subbed before. Thought this was my first month. Love the podcast. Well, thanks. You, thanks. you, pro you honestly probably got gifted a sub because Spoopy yeah. Girl's over here gifting 10 subs. Gifting all the subs. Thank you, Spoopy Girl. Yeah. You are now the top gifter. I appreciate you. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a lot of things to talk about today. A lot of yes. little, a lot of little things happened. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, I've, I've had this, I've talked about this a few times on this show and on other shows. I think Nintendo, I think there's a market for Nintendo to make a small, cheap, dedicated handheld. Mm -hmm. It's up in the air whether or not Nintendo will ever make a dedicated handheld ever again. And there's uh, a small little piece of news about that as well. Okay. But before we get into that, it's the beginning of the month. We have to do our yes. little public service announcement where yes. we talk about all of the PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live, and now apparently Switch games you can get with your monthly subscription services for free yes. or included in your subscription services. 
This is one of the months where uh, all three of them are giving you free games if you pay uh, through the nose for their various subscription services. We start, as always, of course, with PlayStation. Uh, starting uh, July 5th, which is today, for the entire month of June, you get Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time on the PS4 and PS5. You get uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man uh, Man of Medan for PS4. And you get... Uh, Arca- I'm going to butcher this. Arcadegeddon on PS4 and you PS5. Can't, you can't butcher that. Arcadegeddon. Arcadegeddon. It's it's actually Osmosis Jones. Yes. <laughs> it looks a lot like Osmosis Jones for some reason. Bob, only only 90s kids will remember Osmosis Jones. <laughs> and, and and it's a Kids WB spinoff series, Ozzy and Drix. Wasn't it like a little problematic? There was like something problematic about it. I don't know. There was like, I don't know. Probably. It was a late 90s Fairly Brothers comedy. I'm sure it was problematic in some capacity. <laughs> Um. Well, all right. Our, our, none of this really looks that great, except for Crash Bandicoot Four. That's kind of a big deal to be getting yeah. uh, as part of your monthly subscription service. Yes, uh, especially because Crash Bandicoot, despite not technically being a Sony franchise, is synonymous with the PlayStation brand, and yes. here they are giving it to you uh, for free. That's a great deal. So if you uh, yes. have PlayStation Plus, you should check that. Now, this doesn't include PlayStation Plus Premium, I should add. This is just yes, a baseline no. PlayStation Plus service. So if you just have regular old yes. PlayStation Plus, you're getting Crash Bandicoot 4 included in that. You could just download it now and you can play it whenever you want. Correct. We have to download it within the month. So hurry up. Yeah. Uh, all right. What does Xbox have for us? Nothing good. Uh, well... For Xbox, for the entire month, you get uh, Beasts of Marvilla Island. Uh, you get uh, Relicta. Rel- Relicta. Yes, Relicta. That's what it's of called. Course. From July 16th to August 15th. Uh, for the Xbox 360, you have Thrillville off the rails from July 1st to the 15th. And Torchlight from July 16th to the 31st. And as is tradition with the last few months of Game Pass, uh, Torchlight is a repeat. It was originally (laughs) available with Games with Gold back in August of 2019, and we covered it on Wolf Den Live. I put the link uh, in the keep. It is 5 minutes and 11 seconds in. Uh, If you missed your chance to get Torchlight, now's your chance to try and get it again. This is the episode I always go back to because it starts with us recording from a Game Boy camera. Yes. You said this was 2018? Yeah, 2019. 2019. Now you might see yeah. other there's a, there's other content of people using a Game Boy camera as a webcam or streaming from a Game yes. Boy camera. This predates all the ones I've seen. Yep. Uh but anyway, apparently in this uh in this episode there's more than that. We it's torchlight <laughs> for a minute, and you know this because you download every single one. So you went to go well, download it, and you were like, "Oh wait, this I have this already." Actually, actually, no. Uh, the first article I read about the games of gold liner for this month was on Polygon, and they mentioned it. Oh, so people are starting to catch on mm-hmm. to the fact that Xbox is repeating 360 games, and I think even Microsoft is catching on to this fact. They're realizing they're running out of shit to give out. So we might as well get into it right now. Oh, no. Uh, Starting in October, Xbox will no longer be including Xbox 360 games with the monthly games with gold uh, giveaways, basically. How many did they have this time? They had two? Oh, so we're losing two whole games, basically. Yeah, it's, it, it's always been two uh, Xbox One games and two Xbox 360 games. Uh, and they include X, uh, original Xbox and the Xbox 360 games. So does this mean we're only going to get two games? Or does this mean they're going to start giving us better stuff? Or I think we're probably well, only going to get two games. This is the email they sent me. Okay. <laughs> which I'm sure a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of you guys got. 
um, if you subscribe to Xbox Live. I'll read it. Beginning October 1st, 2022, the monthly games provided to Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and Xbox Live members via Games with Gold will no longer include Xbox 360 titles. We have reached the limit of our ability to bring Xbox 360 games to the catalog. Wow. However, Games with Gold will continue to will continue to include exciting Xbox One titles and exclusive savings each month. This will not impact any 360 games that you have downloaded before October 2022. Any 360 titles that you redeemed via Games with Gold before that time are yours to keep on your Xbox account, regardless of whether you continue to subscribe. We thank you for being a loyal member. You for sure said gays with gold. I just want to be clear. (laughs) <laughs> we're talking about games with gold well i mean having watched my fair share of rupaul's drag race i know <laughs> that there are your regular gays and then there are your gays with gold right right and right. those are the ones who can shante and stay everyone else has to shashe away speaking another language well <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i mean obviously they reached their limit of games with gold like, I mean, obviously, they reached their limit of Xbox 360 games. They've been repeating Xbox 360 games. Did they, though? Did they, though? Because, okay. So, they announced a while back that they were going to end the backwards compatibility program. Of, they're going to stop adding games to it because they've reached the limit of, like, what they can, like, get licenses for and get agreements with with publishers and developers. Okay, fine. I understand that. However, there are still a plethora of games on the 360 that are that they could have picked from that they haven't picked from yet uh several higher profile games um that they just never choose to go to they always choose like the weird obscure games the weird obscure indie games and recently they've started to repeat themselves i don't understand why like the rockstar games haven't been included in games with gold why like some of the classic EA titles or some of even first party Microsoft titles have not been included in games of gold. It just doesn't make sense to me that they would just let this, like if they're going to keep this going, make it worthwhile. Don't just let it uh, fester and die just because you want to, you know, big up game pass because game pass and games with gold are two different things. To me, they serve two different audiences. Uh, one is for the person who plays games all the time, which would be Game Passes. One is for somebody who wants to have a curated but you know decent collection of games on their system. That's the games with gold people. So, I mean, I get eventually they would have to stop the 360 games and the original Xbox games, but I think I think it's clear that they're just giving up. Like they just don't care anymore. I mean, they must know, they must have some sort of metric. Uh, People probably aren't playing them as much. But also, like, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like, like, that's also contributing to why people aren't playing them as much. Because they're they're (laughs) giving us shitty games. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, this doesn't confirm or deny the amount of games we're getting. They just said they're not giving us 360 games. They're not saying that we're going to get less games. Or, 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 or the same amount. I I mean, I maybe this is a bad example to go off of, but I remember when Sony said they're going to stop doing PlayStation 3 and Vita games for yeah. PS Plus. You know, they were given two PS4 games a month, two PS3 games a month, and two uh, Vita games a month. They were giving a lot. When they, when they stopped doing PS3 and Vita games, they just gave out PS4 games. So six games dropped down to two. I don't know necessarily if Microsoft's going to do the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if they I did think they the same might. thing. I, I think Microsoft is phasing out Xbox Live, period. Right. Well, in, in favor of the ultimate subscription. Yeah. So I think that this is, I think that they're slowly going to just start removing games with gold entirely. Right. Well, I don't know because you could you could position games with gold and like Xbox Live Gold in general as like the entry level membership. That's true like, too. You get, you get a lot of good perks with it, but if you want the full deal, you got to get the Game Pass membership. Be- be- because if they want to compete with Sony, Sony has a phenomenal deal. Yeah, a hundred and a hundred dollars a year, and you get like a fuck ton of games. 
Yeah. Uh, as part of their subscription service. Uh, if you want all the retro stuff, which isn't that much, it's $120 a year. Game, Game Pass Ultimate is $180. Right. So, uh, yeah, and Microsoft does need a more entry level one. So, games with uh, so, so Xbox Live Gold might not be it, but yeah, give us something a little pricier, maybe that yeah. gives us a taste of the uh, Game Pass collection. I think that'd be I think that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I think that Xbox Live games with gold is 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 on its outs it's not looking good for that i mean i i'm sure they're gonna keep it around for a a while Mm -hmm. i mean because they gotta have something you know sony has something even nintendo has something they have Mm -hmm. to have like an equivalent to compete they didn't initially uh playstation was the first to give away games with their online subscription service then eventually microsoft added the games with gold I didn't know that. So they were, yeah, they were already playing catch up to like bow out now. Kind of says that they lost that race. You know what it was? It's because way? PlayStation was giving their shit away for free. They were like, they, they didn't have uh, a paid online service. Yeah. So when they started it, they were like, we need to give these people some value or all they're going to be pissed. And people were pissed anyway. Yeah. Well, p- people were pissed uh, because they launched the paid service and then all of a sudden, uh, the service dro- would drop out for like days at a time. <laughs> it well, just wouldn't they work. They launched. They started giving games away after. You remember the the PlayStation Three network hack that like took down the PlayStation Network for like months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> after they, that got squared away, and as part of like their "We're Sorry" campaign, they gave games away for free. Yeah, like you can that. get Infamous and Little Big Planet and Wipeout and whatnot. And because that was so successful, they decided to do it again as part of the PlayStation Plus membership. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Apparently, there's also Nintendo stuff. This, yes. this, this month, they've, they've finally lined up with, with yes. all the other people. And, and this is a uh, weird world for those 90, 90s kids who remember uh, Osmosis Jones. Because four <laughs> classic Sega Genesis games is coming to your Nintendo system. And they're not bad. It's not a bad no. collection. Uh, for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack members, you get uh, Comic Zone, Target Earth, Zero Wing, and Mega Man The Wily Wars. Where would people know Zero Wing from? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> early there's only one place. Kids, <laughs> well, early 2000s kids will remember it from... Uh, the classic internet uh, video, I think originally on Newgrounds.com, of uh, all your base are belong to us. That classic, classic. Meme it's literally me. known for just having a bad translation. <laughs> yes. Possibly the worst translation of video game history. Um, Comic, Zone, said, Comic Zone, cult classic. Uh, not a great game. I have to just, I have to just throw that. I have to Comic say Zone that. would be a <laughs> Comic Zone would be an excellent game if it was fair. Yeah, it's, it's not, not fair. fair. It's, it's not it's a... <laughs> incredibly difficult. It's frustratingly difficult. Yeah. Highly recommend playing that game with the invincibility cheat on. Whoa. Like, like seriously. You may think like it's easy and like there's no challenge to it, but at least you'll get a sense of like what the game could have been <laughs> if it was fair. You it's know? so unfair that punching enemies hurts you. Yeah, because the whole world, including yourself, is made out of paper, like a comic Mm -hmm. book. So therefore, if anything happens to the paper, technically something's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So you have to, like, be careful with how you damage not just the bad guys, but the world around you. And health is scarce in that game. So And you have one life. Yeah. You die, and then you have to start the whole fucking game over again. Yeah. (laughs) And then lastly... Yeah. D- did we say Mega Man Wily Wars? We said Mega Man Wily Wars, yeah. Mega Man Wily Wars uh, wasn't released in America until the Sega Genesis Classics collection. Like like, like yeah. the, the Sega Genesis Classic console. It came out on that. Um, yes. So this is a really big deal. This is, uh, it, it's yeah. just it's just the first three Mega Man games, but like remade for the Sega Genesis. Yes. Um, think of it as uh, Super Mario All-Stars, but with Mega Man. <laughs> Yeah, so this is awesome. 
it, this is uh yeah. it's great to get that and then target earth i know nothing about target earth and it looks not yeah me neither mine. i will say zero wing um it is from what i can understand a pretty decent uh shoot 'em up game if you're so if you like r type or gradius or games like that uh however the soundtrack fucking rules oh. so play it just for the soundtrack alone <laughs> okay I'll have to check. I haven't actually looked at the soundtrack. Put it to you this way. The song they use in the All Your Bass video is from Zero. Oh, I didn't know that. That song yeah. rips. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was made for that. Nope. So if you have the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, you're finally getting some good Sega Genesis games. Four. Yes. That's pretty, it's pretty big. It's a pretty yeah, big it's a, month a for, for Nintendo. I know... Uh, Comic Zone is already available on Switch through the Sega Genesis Classics Collection, but if you don't have that, you can play this. This version will have a rewind. The Genesis Classics Collection does not have rewind. Ooh, interesting. So, there you go. Uh, shout out to Mecha Dragon for the 12 months. Sorry, I had no ad Twitch subscription for a while, and I forgot I wasn't subscribed. Uh, that's fine. You don't got to apologize. You You didn't even break your streak. Uh, Joey Bizzle, thank you for the two months. Love all the content. Bought the King Kong Pro 2 after your vid. Love it. Thanks, dude. I'm glad you enjoy that controller. Spoopy Girl gifted another sub to Otaku Sam. Uh, Garrison, thank you for the five months. Don't most 90s kids try and forget Osmosis Jones? <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing a most. YouTube video of like a problematic thing from, from it. And I watched it and I was like, holy shit, but I don't remember what it was. You throw a rock and you can find a problematic <laughs> thing from a 90s cartoon. I watched one the other day about how Captain Planet was not as progressive with its environmental uh, message as one might think. Oh, what what happened? Yeah. There there was a random episode about like overpopulation and how oh. that's a big cl- cause of uh, pollution. And if you get to the root cause of the overpopulation uh, argument, not a lot of people out. who are... <laughs> if a lot of people who say like the the planet is too populated are really just people who are mad that there are too many brown people in Africa. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say it's like it no. sounds like a like a xenophobia thing. So yeah, it's a hundred percent a xenophobia thing. So yeah, a Thanos the Thanos snap people. Yeah, you know for kids <laughs> for kids. <laughs> yeah, saying the world's too populated is not a good message for kids. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Mackenzie, thank you for the subscription. Annie Maps, thank you for the two months. And Jin Jukebox, thank you for the 18 months. Good evening, fellas. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, let's talk about Nintendo. So I've had this idea for a while. I've been talking about all these little handheld devices and whatnot. Uh, and I've been going back and playing my Game Boy playing the analog pocket i just got the uh what do you call this thing the play date yeah it's actually fucking awesome this thing nice i wish there were more games for it but it is it's i love this thing well part of the appeal is that you can develop for it it's easy to develop for it is actually insanely easy so you just go to the website the problem is you have to have one and they're not easy to get but right when you have one, you go to the website and you can develop straight on the website. The whole dev kit and 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 engine is on yeah. the website, and it's it's basically drag and drop. You can develop your right. whole game in their web browser. It's freaking insane. Um, but playing all these things, uh, and, and getting all these little portable emulators, it makes me uh, wish Nintendo had something like a. Uh, and, and even like the Game & Watch that we got last year and the year before that, we got the little uh, Mario and Zelda Game & Watches. Why can't we have that guy? Why can't we have something similar that's just cheap and underpowered? There's a place in the market for it because I talk about it all the time. People are buying all these portable emulators. Why can't we have something like that official by Nintendo? It doesn't even need physical cartridges. It could be all digital, just something cheap that uh, it's cheap for people to buy when you fit in your pocket because the Switch ain't fitting in my pocket. Um, I, This is a problem that, I mean, specifically what you're talking about, uh, just a dedicated handheld, I'm assuming just to play like retro games and stuff. There's no way it's going to power like... 
indie large. games and, and small stuff. There's a plenty of stuff on this. I think I think a large majority of the Switch's library could play on a device that is a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars. Right. I mean, if you want to get technical, the Nintendo already has a dedicated handheld on the market right now. It's called the mm-hmm. Switch Lite. That is true. Um, however, I, that's not really what you're like talking about, you know, because that's still a Switch. You just can't dock it. The thing with this isn't a Nintendo problem. This is really more of a video games problem in general. I might have talked about this on the show before. Video games are not concerned about the past. They're concerned about right now. They want you playing the latest and greatest, the hottest, the most powerful device that they have. And they don't really want you going back and like, you know, visiting their library all that much. So I don't really. And Nintendo has shown this probably more than anyone. They put out, of course, the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. But they only did that in the Christmas seasons between the Wii U and the Switch when they needed a product to put out for Christmas to boost their bottom line because they didn't really have anything. The Wii U wasn't doing I mean, we're kind of in that space right now. True, but the the Switch has such like a high profile right now and people are still making games for it and people are still buying games for it. That's the big thing because they make most of their money from people buying games. I don't think they're in a rush to do another either a classic system or uh, like a dedicated handheld just for s- specific games. Right. I, I So that's also something I've talked about wanting is a, is a classic version of the Game Boy. Make a classic console right. of the Game Boy with like 10 to 20 games on it. Uh, mm-hmm. That'd be great. But I'd rather something like that from the Pokemon company because... You got to have Pokemon games on it. I don't right. think they're going to make a classic console with Pokemon games on it, which would be great. But I, I see that, I see that being a better value for the Pokemon company because uh, they mm-hmm. can release, a, a, they can release one for each retro Pokemon game and and sell an insane amount. Um, Nintendo can't really do that. They would have to sell a collection of games. But I'm right. I'm over that idea now. Like it would be cool, and I still want something like that. But I want more now. I want something. I want a whole ass device that could play a multitude of games that can be updated with more games on it. Because I have all of these other things made by third parties that I like more than playing a Switch sometimes. Right. Um, well, yeah, because there's they're small. They're easy. They're much more easily transferable. By like by that I mean like you put it in your pocket. Or right. your backpack much easier than you can a switch. Also, like getting games on it, you're more in control of putting games on it. Because right. on a switch, all you have is either cartridge or download it from the eShop. With these things, load them on an SD card, load them directly from your computer. Uh you source the games yourself so you can go wherever you want to get the games, things like that. Well, one of the best things about the play date that I learned that I'll talk about in my video is how you get games on here it, mm-hmm. it's got wi-fi believe it or not this little tiny thing has a <laughs> wi-fi card in it uh you go to the website play.date and there's a tab called side load and you literally just drag the zip file to the side load and it just shows up on your play date and that's it that's all you have to do so you can download right. any freaking game you want you go to itch.io you get all these different there's a whole play date tab you can play all these indie games and stuff it's incredible. And and like uh, there's stuff like that like on the eShop you can download it from your web browser and it'll show up on your Switch. That's kind of helpful. But yeah. uh it is a lot nicer to get you know indie games from the source so that they don't have to go through the whole uh, uh Nintendo approval process and whatever. Yeah. Uh, I recently learned they have to pay for that approval pr- every time they put an update up. It has to get tested by Nintendo, and they have to pay for that mm-hmm. testing and stuff. Um, you said there's already a Switch Lite. That's already a dedicated handheld. People are yeah. talking about how there might be a new Switch that is a dedicated home console because people want a 4K version for some stupid reason. I don't think yeah. this is ever going to happen, but people are saying there could be a newer version of this. It could be the newer version of the current Switch or a, or Switch 2 or a Switch Pro that is a dedicated home console. I think right. 
there's not really place in the market for that. I think there's more place for something that is a dedicated handheld, like a Switch Lite. But I think it's also relevant to talk about, uh, I just found this on Reddit right before we started. Okay. The Nintendo Switch Lite and OLED reveal trailers are both set to private on Nintendo's YouTube channels. The UK one is fine, okay. but uh, Nintendo US and Japan set the two videos to private. The original reveal trailer for the OG Switch is still up. What the hell does this mean? <laughs> that is, is that is very strange. It is very strange. The top the because top like, response is I am ready to be whelmed. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no reason why those things would go down. Yeah. Even it, even if they're prepping like a new system, there's no reason why those those videos should be down. Now it's fun to speculate that they're coming out with something. Mm-hmm. I th- I think the boring reason for this is a licensing issue. Something happened and they just don't have the license or like there the a song fr- that was that yeah, was or they're afraid trailer, that yeah. there's gonna be a licensing issue, or there's like an actor yeah. or actress in it that they, I don't know, didn't sign a, the right waiver or something. Like something really yeah. innocuous and boring probably happened. Uh, but there's also people who think that we're gonna get an OLED switch light. Somebody yes. in the chat just said in July. <laughs> I think Nate the Hate, I was on the Spawncast last week, and he was talking about that happening. An OLED switch light. I, that feels incredibly soon for something that has not been announced yet. You know, it. Do, well, yeah. You know what? Usually, that. Well, if if we're going by switch light timeline, it would be announced mm-hmm. around now, and then it won't yeah. come out till like September. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's it. Just it doesn't seem like. It's. It seems like that's what they should have done before they sh- the switch Lite should have been the OLED console and the switch OLED shouldn't have existed honestly right because <laughs> because they put the OLED screen in the dockable switch the OLED screen yeah. should go in the one that's a dedicated handheld because you want to mm-hmm. play it I barely experience the OLED on my switch light OLED because it's always docked mm-hmm. um so I don't know if there's a market for a more expensive Switch Lite. You know, it just doesn't seem yeah. right. Maybe a, if they keep it the same price, I mean, sure, a, a refresh of the Switch Lite sounds great. But otherwise, that would be a really bizarre thing to release around now. Yeah, and I just don't know like if there is an actual market for you know a, a Switch Lite OLED. You know, because right. the whole idea is that you have like entry levels, the Switch Lite, and then the Switch, which is regular, and then Switch Pro, uh, Switch OLED is, for lack of a better word, the Pro version. So right. adding another one in there just seems to be like muddying the water, so to speak. Yeah, it's too much. I again, I think that uh, the place in the market is a small little dedicated device mm-hmm. that can play all the underpowered stuff. Like, I don't need a whole ass switch to play Shovel Knight. You know that could run yeah. on like on like an Odin's worth of hardware. I mean, the Odin is actually pretty powerful. It's probably like like as powerful as the Switch. <laughs> Something right. smaller than that. You know, the the freaking yeah, yeah. Shovel Knight ran on a 3DS. That's where I first played. Yes. It. <laughs> so like even a 3DS's worth of power would be totally fine. Uh. That's that's what I that's what I think we're missing in in, in the market. Otherwise, yeah. uh, Switch Pro. I mean, people want Nintendo to compete with uh, with the likes of Xbox and PlayStation, but I honestly think that uh, that gap in the market isn't as important. Yeah, I mean, and they've proven they don't have to beat Sony and Microsoft in terms of raw horsepower. Yeah. They've proven that they can be just as successful, if not more successful. With a limited hardware capability. So, at, at this point, that that power gap will be closed by the next Nintendo Switch. Yeah, like a, like, like the second one. Like the there'll be a new one that has all of the power that you're going to need for the next generation yeah. of, of games. I don't think you're going to take the current games and upres them. I don't think that's uh, yeah very important. 
Ugh, anyway, that's uh, th- that's the speculation for. Yeah. That's your, that's your weekly uh, uh, injection of Nintendo hardware speculation. So I just did a little uh, research real quick. Mm-hmm. So when I bought the NES Classic back in 2017, that retailed for $60. Yeah. Uh, both this, the uh, Mario Game & Watch, and the Zelda Game & Watch uh, retailed for $50. Yeah. So, for ten dollars less than the NES Classic, you get this little thing that ran three games uh, and had a, has a screen. <laughs> so I feel like one of the reasons why Nintendo ha- didn't never did a Game Boy Classic is because of cost. It would be $100. A hundred dollars at yeah, minimum. It would, it would be a hundred dollars. And it, but at that point, a hundred dollars, you know. First of all, that's how much a Game Boy was back in 1989. Mm-hmm. Uh, and second of all, like at that point, you just save up a little bit more and get a Switch Lite. You know, there's I've, no reason. I, like, I think a lot of people in this chat would pay a hundred dollars for for a for a classic yeah. Game Boy with ten to twenty games on it. This chat would, yes, because it's this chat. This is a <laughs> this is a hard like. Let's be real here. You, yeah, yeah. Y'all are a hardcore, dedicated video game fan base. You would be interested in something like that. You know, the average person, like my boss at work and my nine to five, would think it would be cool, but he's not going to go out and get it. So, but that's what the classic consoles are for. The classic consoles are for the more hardcore fan base. Th- they're not, though. The classic consoles are more supposed to be a casual thing. It's just that the hardcore would... fan base... The hardcore fan base are a bunch of jerks, and they go home and buy them immediately so that the casual don't get their hands on them. I wouldn't call the classic consoles a casual thing. I'd say that Nintendo wants um uh, uh, uh somewhere in the middle. It, it, it's for people who are our age that remember that stuff and are willing to right. pay a premium for it. We got we we grew up with that stuff. Now we got money burning holes in our pockets, and we want a little piece of that nostalgia. Right. I don't think but, it's it, it it I don't think it's uh uh I don't think it's necessarily for the hardcore people, but it's definitely not a mainstream thing. It's it's I I disagree cuz you know that's something that you plug directly into your into your TV. Uh it looks like the thing you had as a kid and it plays all the games that you played as a kid and you and those are the only games you ever want to play, you don't want to play anything else. Right. They're for people who you know, video games during one particular era of their life and maybe want to dip their toes in every now and then here and there. They want to play a little bit of Super Mario Brothers. They want to play a little bit of uh, Mega Man 2. They want to play a little bit of Metroid or Legend of Zelda. They don't want to do play Breath of the Wild or Odyssey or Mega Man 11 or Dread or anything like that. They just want what they played back then. Yeah, I still think that the same people who bought those SNES classics and stuff would pay up to $100 for something because the value is in the screen and stuff. Right. I mean, the Game & Watch, I think, is a pretty bad example because it's pretty shitty. (laughs) It's like a kind of a shitty console. This is is one of the worst ways to play Mario. It's $50, and in that case, it feels like too much money. But again, I think people would spend up to hundred dollars for a, for something that looks like a Game Boy, hopefully a pocket, yeah. and has a goddamn backlight. But I think that it would be super uh, cheap to get parts for something like that these days, and it'd be super easy for them to put ten to twenty ROMs on that thing. I mean, it would be easy for them to put ROMs on it, definitely. Uh, I don't know if it would be cheap though, because like everything's going up in price. Everything's now. expensive. But yeah. but but I'm saying they don't need fancy hardware. I mean that thing has no. a freaking straight up IPS screen in it. The Game and yeah. Watch. That mm-hmm. I mean for a Game Boy you don't need that. You 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 as long as it has a backlight, you can put whatever the hell screen you want on it. Yeah. I mean LCD I'll, screen would probably be the best, but still you can put yeah. whatever you want on it. I mean it would have to be something relatively modern because you know anything less than that would 
you know, we, we will take a one look at it and be like, oh, I don't know if I can play this anymore. Like I played like an original Game Boy not too long ago. And I'm like, no, I'll never look at this again. You know, <laughs> you, know what's, analog? you know, it's really annoying. The play date does not have a backlight. Look, I turn, look here it is here it is in front of the light and here it is when i turn it away from the light there there it goes oh. can't play it anymore <laughs> oh that's unfortunate it sucks it's really stupid because the screen uh. is beautiful otherwise but yeah. uh but like i can't like i can't play it right now like like i can see the screen but i would hate playing it like this i it has you have to be in d- d- direct view of a light i even was recording footage of this thing in my mm-hmm. apartment my apartment has windows on on two of the walls so there's yeah. light everywhere and i still couldn't see the freaking screen i had to put a <laughs> light on my camera to film it yeah now the screen the the back of the screen is really reflective but that's not enough yeah know? So like it looks really nice when light is directly blasting in front of it. People don't remember that either. If you give somebody a Game Boy, like give a normie who used to have a Game Boy, give them a Game Boy now, and they'll go, "Wow, I don't, I don't, rem- I, I don't remember yeah. the screen being this shitty." Yeah. But it, but if you give them a backlit Game Boy, they'll forget how shitty the original Game Boy screen yeah. is. They they will think that that's how it was. So that's why I think if they do make a Game Boy Classic, yeah. Put it. They. Uh, it's got to have a backlight, and then people will just forget that the screen was shitty back in the day, and no one's yeah. gonna want that nostalgia of having a shitty game, uh, uh, screen with a warm light attached to it. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I really do hope that Nintendo does make a dedicated handheld one day. Uh, I think somewhere between now and the next console they release, I would love to see something small. Uh, and and even le- I'm I'm the opposite of everybody else. Everybody else wants a 4K Switch Pro. I want the I want the most underpowered little tiny <laughs> piece of shit thing. Right. First, I'll let them fix their account system though. Fix the account system. Yeah, let me play the same games that I have on my Switch on this little that's probably stupid the most underpowered part. thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we'll have a great time. Then we'll be in the 21st century finally. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, chat's been blowing up here. Yeah. Uh, IPS is a type of LCD. Yes, I know. I'm aware. Um, Circa X with 10 months. I think Xbox and PlayStation should get into the handheld game. A sequel to the Vita would be sick. Seeing things like Ein Odin, I know they could do it just as good or even better. Or even make first-party phone controller attachments for cloud streaming. I think the problem with both of them is that other people are coming out with great hardware. There's a lot of ways you can play their games Mm -hmm. on other devices that they don't have to make. Like, Game Pass works on basically everything. Uh... PlayStation has their own cloud service that also works on basically everything. Uh, so the they're a lot closer to being in the handheld market um, than Nintendo would be if they didn't have a hybrid console. Right. Uh, I don't know if... They, I honestly don't know if they could... If PlayStation or Xbox could do a better job than the likes of the iNode and or even the Steam Deck. I don't know if they could. I mean, the, everybody loves the PlayStation Vita, but I don't think that was, you know, I think we've got, we've had a lot of innovation since then. And yeah. even at the time, like it was powerful, but it's not like the UI was any good. <laughs> yeah. It had a lot of cool features like the whole cross save and stuff, but now that's the norm. Yeah. I think once Sony realized uh, people, uh, the Vita was not the like the next gen uh, handheld that they thought it was going to be. Like it wasn't the bridge uh, between uh, taking your PS4 games on the go, or people weren't treating it as a way to take your PS4 games on the go. Like they pretty much just abandoned it, even though there was like this like cult following around it, and they didn't really, they didn't really pay attention to that cult following. As the Vita didn't do what Sony wanted it to do. And I don't think they're going to go back to the handheld game ever again because of that. Think about... Don't forget about the, the lawsuit 
<laughs> where, where Sony said yeah. you'll be able to play any of your PlayStation 3 games on your Vita. And uh, that wasn't true. You can only play like yeah. <laughs> a handful. Uh, and they got sued for it. So people were a little salty that the system didn't work as advertised anyway. And then they kind of fixed it with the PS4. Remote play worked like great. Um, yeah. And also my favorite part of the, the reason I bought the Vita was because of the cross save and cross play. That was like revolutionary yes. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, now that's normal. If something doesn't have that, I'm like, ew, what's the, why am I, I'm not going to buy this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess it was innovative at the time, but uh, I don't know. These days, I don't know if PlayStation could, could enter that market and be successful again. I'm sure they like, I'm sure if they could, they would, mm -hmm. but I don't think they will necessarily. I think they've they've done two handhelds right now. Neither one of them uh, really put a dent in Nintendo's market share. Although the the PSP came closer than the Vita did. Um, so yeah, I think they're just perfectly fine, you know, being the dominant home console at the moment. Well, the they're having a rough time producing PlayStation 5s. <laughs> That's true. Also, yeah. I don't think the hardware of the PlayStation 5 is anything to, to write home about. Like, I, I think that uh, it needed a lot more time in the oven to, 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 to right. bang out some ideas for that. So I, I have little faith in, in uh, Sony's hardware production as of right now. I, yeah. think they, I think if they're going to make a handheld, they got a long ways to go before they get back yeah. into that swing of things. Um, also, it's going to be white now because like <laughs> PS5 is white. And I'm like, yeah, do I really want a white handheld? The black ones look so cool. I mean, do you want to talk about that right now? We can talk about that right now. It's kind of relevant. Oh, the, the monitors and the headphones? E yeah. Where did I put that? I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Uh, right now. Yeah. Uh, Sony yeah, is so making uh, headphones and a monitor, and the monitors look sick. The monitors are apparently very good from like what the early, early reviews okay. are. I take it back. They look like shit with this shitty <laughs> stand thing. It looks uh, they're trying to do like a portal like robot thing. It's yeah. not working out. Uh, why do I got a kickstand coming at me? How am I supposed <laughs> to put a keyboard in front of that? But uh, Sony targets, yeah. It has great specs. Go, go, go ahead. Sony targets PC gamers with new hardware brand InZone. That is some 90s ass shit if I've ever heard. <laughs> uh, Sony Electronics is launching a game, a gaming gear brand called InZone aimed at PC Whoa. gamers. The company announced its new brand on Tuesday with two 27 inch monitors and three variations of gaming headphones. InZone had been in the works since 2019 before the pandemic as Sony executives observed how Observed growth in the video game and esports industries. Uh, we are entering the gaming gear industry with monitors and headsets at an exciting time since gaming and esports have gotten even more popular over the last few years. Uh, Kazuki, Sony's president of home entertainment and sound products, told the Washington Post, We are leveraging Sony's high quality display and audio technologies to deliver products that will be that will allow gamers to immerse themselves into their gaming world. Uh, the name of the brand, Key says, is meant to refer to the immersive, the immersive feeling gamers experience when they are in the zone. Uh, that's a direct I hate quote. That. They, I they hate want that you to so feel much. like you're <laughs> in the zone. Well, like I said, '90s ass <laughs> video game bullshit. I love it. Uh, and admitted latecomers to the PC gaming market, Sony plans to win players over. Through competitive pri competitively priced products, Sony plans to sell a nine hundred dollar four K resolution monitor with a uh, one hundred and forty four hertz refresh rate available this summer, and a and a five hundred thirty dollar ten eighty p monitor with a two forty refresh rate coming later this year. Th that those the specs for that price are fantastic. Like yes. nine hundred dollars sounds like a lot for a monitor, but it's got HDMI two point one. It's four yes. K. How many hertz? Is it 144 or 120? Uh, 4K, 144. Okay, so the PlayStation 4 is only going to do 120 out of that, but still, that's yeah. that's fantastic specs for this fantastic the, price for those specs, and it's Sony. Yeah, and the 
And the the five thirty dollar model is ten eighty p, but has two forty refresh. Yeah, that's also a great deal. Yeah. I would love, I would have loved for a fourteen forty p version. Right, but PlayStation Five, I still don't think supports fourteen forty p. So I don't think it does. Anyway, uh, Japanese conglomerate hopes that PC gamers, in particular first person shooter players, will give InZone a chance uh, and not associate Sony primarily with consoles. The name of the brand is meant to. Oh, I just read that. Uh, we're it's it's so that you feel in the zone, in case you were wondering. Right, uh, right, we're not right. saying that we're. Fo- we're not saying we're not focusing on PS5 users, but because we are latecomers to monitor and headphones for the gaming segment, we believe that we have a chance to catch up. Uh, Key added that he hopes Sony can catch up by appealing to top competitive gamers and influencers who might use in zone products and promote them to their audiences. Uh, oh, here we go. Sony Sony's approach to gaming headphones is to try to see which of their options resonate with consumers. The company will offer a wireless headset for $300 with noise canceling and synthetic leather, along with a pared down 229 wireless version, uh, no leather or noise canceling, and a $99 pair of wired headphones. Uh, Key said that all three pairs will be equipped with spatial sound feature field, uh, spatial sound field feature. Uh, gamers will be able to hear how far opponents are from them and where they are located based on sound cues. So, so uh, I'm not very excited about the headphones. Three hundred dollars is kind <laughs> of a lot for for something like this. Also, yeah. I'm noticing and I'm watching the the like v- also very '90s ass uh, uh, <laughs> uh, commercial for it. Yeah, they're purposely not shooting the headphones in a way where you see them dead on. Because mm-hmm. they're fucking massive. They're like cans on your head. They're huge. I saw, uh, I think, The Verge do a review on all this in-zone stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the headphones look insanely big. Uh, it's noted that the headphones are designed to be less tight around the ears so that players can wear them comfortably for hours. That's that's good. That is good. I, I, I have yeah. an issue with over-the-ear headphones where the top presses down on, like, the soft spot right. on my head, you know, like, like it hurts after a while. God bless you. Thank so, you. So I, I, I don't like that. I'm wearing earbuds. I don't like over the ear headphones yeah. for that, for that reason. Uh, my ears normally don't have a problem It's the top of my head. That has the problem. Uh, I have zero interest in their headphones, but the, the monitors are, I'm pretty impressed by. I'm interested in, in taking a look at those. Uh, I just skipped over. What does it say? Uh, Aesthetically, the monitors and headsets are designed to blend in with the PS5. Uh, the two monitors that their Sony is offering will work with the PS5, uh, which will optimize screen colors once connected. The monitors also have a switcher feature, allowing users to connect a single keyboard, mouse, and headset to a PC and PS5 at the same time and switch between the two. So that's, that's cool. I only know of two monitors that have a KVM built in, this and one by Gigabyte. Wait, 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 wait. I wish wait, more. Wait. Did it yeah, say you never did it say me? straight up a KVM or did it just say the audio would switch? I I, I, I thought it, you were talking about the headphones when you said that. No, no, the monitors. The monitors are going to have a switcher. So you can hook up one keyboard, one mouse, and one headset to the monitor and switch between PC and PS5. Does it have USB-C? Uh, so the two I monitors the that I have says. here in front of me are the gigabyte mm-hmm. monitors I did a video on a while ago. They were also one of the first HDMI 2.1 monitors. Uh, they're very beautiful and very big. And they have a KVM in them, which is the best feature. Because I yeah. have my MacBook plugged in through USB-C. And I have my uh, PC plugged in as well. So I'm on my PC now. I was just on my MacBook. All I did was turn off my MacBook, turn on my PC and my keyboard and mouse and everything just works just like completely normal. Right. So a KVM in a in a monitor is freaking life changing. I'm looking to see if they I'm pretty sure it uh, does have USB-C. IOS. I'm pretty sure it has that. I mean, it's a it's a high-end gaming monitor, so I would be surprised if it didn't at this mm-hmm. point. Uh, USB C. Yeah, I will it, say. It has it. Yeah. Okay. I will say that like the monitor and the headphones are. I mean, Sony makes 
some of the best headphones on the planet and uh, Sony's TV division, at least, makes some of the best televisions on the planet. And they seem to be utilizing a lot of the same tech in both these new headphones and uh, these new monitors. So that's a good sign that they're not half-assing this. They're they're putting the full weight of the Sony brands and quality behind it. So so I remember you, they also have headphones for the PlayStation 5. They're like $100. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, those are, but I think the thing is, like, those are PlayStation 5 headphones. These are gaming headphones modeled after the PlayStation 5. So you can use this for your PC. You can technically use this for your Xbox and your Switch. So, so whereas the PS, the PS5 headphone is specifically for the PS5. I remember hearing you say there were two headphones, a wireless and a wired one. This has three. There's, yeah, I said there were three. I remember hearing a three hundred dollar one and a two hundred and thirty dollar one. Yeah, that's the the second wireless one. Oh, so how much is the wired one? A uh, hundred. Oh, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's a good deal. Uh, what's it missing? You need directional uh, boom. Okay. Oh, it's mic. So, Who cares about the microphone? So the higher the the highest end headphone is the only one that comes with noise cam. The rest of them don't. Well, it also says one of the one of the tiers here on the on the on the table says perfect for PlayStation Five. Yes, yes. Tempest 3D Audio Tech, which I guess is their way of saying no, it's not perfect for PlayStation Five. Wasn't that what they call their uh, their Dolby Atmos knockoff? Well. Why would they say the wireless ones are perfect for PlayStation 5, but the wired one has Tempest 3D audio tech? I don't know. Something's I up there. Know. Something's not right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I mentioned before that the stand looks stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody in chat reminded me that uh, these are VESA mounts, so you can remount them. Uh, you can just oh, get good. rid of that and put a different mount on it. I will say, though... Some monitor companies will sell a version of the monitor without the stand for slightly cheaper. Uh, yes. I would have liked to have seen something like that. Uh, because fun I, you're fact, still paying $900 for a freaking monitor. App- Apple is not one of those companies. They will make you pay full price for a monitor with a base amount. Uh, no, Apple has the $1,000 monitor. The $1,000 monitor stand. That that is true. I'm talking <laughs> about uh, that the new one they came out with the studio display. Yeah, the 27 inch. Uh, the version with the stand and the version with the face amount are the same price. If you want the the stand that like moves, that's like extra money. So they have one that has a stand but cannot be face mounted. Correct. That's stupid. That's very dumb. You- yeah, if you want a vase amount, you have to get it. You have to order it with the vase amount bracket. Is vase amount is vase like a like a like a license? Do they have to pay a license to have a vase amount? Because I don't think so. It shouldn't Vesa, cost any more money to do that. I mean, Vesa is a company, and they're they're a standardization company to like that try to make electronics st- uh, work standard across the board. And one of the things they created was that mount for computer monitors so it's completely it's it makes no sense to charge more for that mount it should just be there right it's not like you're adding any materials but then you have to understand it would ruin the aesthetic of the studio monitor so you have to pay more to ruin the aesthetic (laughs) designed in california if i was a very wealthy man i would try the uh the the crazy like nine thousand dollar Apple monitor with the thousand dollar stand, I would give that a shot. I've I've heard it looks very pretty. I've and it's thing. actually a decent price for like a studio grade uh color calibration monitor. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's like perfect. But yeah. also another problem is the monitors on a MacBook are the best monitors you can get in all yeah. of technology. So like g- getting an Apple monitor that's like insanely priced kind of doesn't make any sense because you can get a MacBook that has that in it already. 
it, it only makes sense if you're getting a desktop, like if you're getting the Mac Studio or a Mac Pro. That's the only right. way. It but makes but sense. then but then get an iMac, and it has one of the best monitors you can get. Well, no, because if you need like if if you need more power than what an iMac offers, right, right. That's the thing. They make it for. They make this stuff for professionals and high end users, mm-hmm. but they market it for everyone. Well, they, well, they want not, they want you. They, they hit a certain point where they were like, "These people think they're professionals." Yeah, basically. Let's, let's make the pro the shitty one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. 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 Uh, we went on a on a on a tangent here about about this this podcast is going on a wild ride. We started Speaking, with a cameo go... from our parents. Yeah, I know this is crazy. What a wacky one. Yeah. Let's go on another tangent. I got those uh, Sony uh, monitors. Have I talked to you about them? The 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 little nine inch uh, PVMs. You, that oh, those. Really PVMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah could, you told me uh, about those. Couldn't put a video on it. I think the S video really? just isn't working out. So I got. Uh. Um, I got myself. I looked up a bunch of videos on this particular uh, uh, Sony monitor. Um, mm-hmm. It's a for those listening. It's a broadcast, like it's all broadcast monitor. So like playing retro games on it should be awesome. Um, yeah. All the videos I saw, people had uh, uh, component cables plugged in through BVM, BDM. Okay. I don't remember, but basically I bought a SCART to component that has the BVM thing. I should have talked to BB Retro. I should have talked to him about it. <laughs> I'm going to DM you later. We're going to have a little talk. Me and BB Retro I, I think I know. BNC, BNC, BNC. BNC, yes. It's, it's, it's SCART to component, but the ends have the BNC adapter on it. Yes, I, I know exactly what what you're talking about. I know what those look like. I also just bought regular BNC adapters that you can just plug RCA into, so that should also mm-hmm. work. Um, but yeah, I just have to I have to wait for that now. I also got the whole back of the monitor is all SDI, which is like a broadcast thing. Uh, yeah. So I bought some SDI cables so you can uh, uh, loop them together, so the same picture will be on both. Nice. Uh, so I, I, now I'm just waiting for those cables so I can't freaking play this stupid thing because I don't have any of those cables. Um, the reason I got this monitor, I said it before, is because, uh, it's a flat panel, like LCD at the mm-hmm. dawn of LCD, but it looks like a PVM. So it looks really like technical and cool, but it won't flicker on camera. Right. That's why I got it. so I can have it in like the background of a shot and it'll look it'll look like a piece of equipment. It'll be like cool. Anyway. Uh where am I? Oh, this uh, is very important news we have to talk about, Will. I yes, meant, I noticed course. you didn't I noticed you of didn't course. put this in in the document for today, but I just put it in there. I figured I, I might I have missed, just, I might have missed it. Figured just something you might have missed. missed. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to overlook. Yeah. Uh somebody it's still a mystery. Put Morbius on a Game Boy Color. Who could this be? Hmm. Who could it have been? Who could this man be? <laughs> hey, there's more. There's Morbius himself. <laughs> I have not read this uh, article yes, yet. Uh, okay, it's from uh, comicbook.com. Not to be confused with comic mm-hmm. book resources, who are not a good website. Uh, <laughs> it's Morbin time for the Game Boy Color and a new video. You- Wolf Den has put Morbius onto the Game Boy Color for some reason, a, lo- a long and tedious process that nevertheless may have been more enjoyable than actually watching Morbius. If this sounds familiar to you, you might remember when this same YouTuber put Christopher Nolan's Tenant onto a Game Boy Advance. Although it, at that time, it was inspired by something specific. The filmmaker's insistence that Tenant should be seen on the largest screen possible despite being the re- released in the early pandemic, uh, when most moviegoers were not willing to go to the theater. Uh, while that uh, while that time Wolf Den joked that they had put the movie on the Game Boy out of spite, this time the YouTuber admits they did Morbius just for some reason. <laughs> okay. Uh, with ten- with Tenet, uh, Wolf Den spread it, uh, Wolf Den spread it over five Game Boy cartridges 
uh, each containing about half an hour of the video. Oh, each containing half an hour of video at six frames per second with a resolution of 192 by 128. Even though Morbius isn't nearly as long as Tenet, the additional compression needed to make it uh, to make the video fit onto a four megabyte Game Boy Color cartridge meant that Morbius took 36 cartridges. Since that's a lot of blank cartridges. Uh, and nobody is going to actually want to watch it this way. He only made three out of the 36. Boo. Yes. Uh, I'll do, I'll say this in my best uh, Bob Wolf impression. <laughs> the original plan was to put Dune on the Game Boy Color cartridge, but because the director of that film said something similarly dumb stuff about wanting people to see it in theaters to see his film on a big screen, uh, said Bob Wolf, the creator behind the account. Uh, he admitted that he may have we been have a little the same voice. <laughs> I know, I know that. See, that's what makes it funny. See, right, it was right. funny because our okay. voices are too similar. So I had to do something. To, this is how said. humor works. I can't believe I have to mansplain humor to my own brother. I'm so sorry. Uh, he wanted to put Dune on the on the the Game Boy Color, but uh, he was intimidated by the scope of the project, and uh, Dune no longer became relevant by the time he was ready to do it. So, of course, long comes Morbius. One of Marvel's most compelling and conflicted characters comes to the big screen as Oscar winner Jared Leto transforms into the fanatic superhero Michael Morbius. Uh, and then it goes on to give a synopsis of the film, which I know none of you care about. Uh, All right, yeah, that's so that's it. Uh, thank you, comicbook.com. Uh, I was going to correct some things that they got wrong, but they got everything <laughs> right, except uh, there was something at the beginning. Uh, now I don't remember. <laughs> I actually it forgot that, that you... it ran at six frames per second on the Game Boy Advance. I forgot about that. <laughs> It said you did Morbius just for some reason. I think that's... I mean, that's... Honestly, that's why. I mean, that was the yeah. title. The first one was out of spite, but this one was just for some reason. Right. There was no spite involved in this one. I wish there was, though. <laughs> I mean, you can't really be spiteful for, for towards a movie like Morbius. It's just kind of like... It's a dog with two legs. Like, it's kind of <laughs> cute. Even though it's oh, horribly disfigured. This is what they got wrong in the second sentence. In a new video. Video is like a month old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? If they, haven't, if they hadn't seen it, it's new to them. It's true. It's true. Uh, I saw this on a different website, but uh, then it hit comicbook.com. And, uh, uh, again, uh, like sometimes these news outlets are late. Are like late to the party. Yeah. I wonder if it'll if it'll hit the hit the running and 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 hit the other uh, outlets. Um, sometimes that happens. The freaking the OLED video. Somebody in the chat just reminded me. The OLED video where I talk about the burn in. Uh, yeah. Hit Japan first for some reason, and mm -hmm. then a whole month later, hit American sites. Right. Very strange. Very strange how these things work. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. So that was, that was a fun little that was a fun little thing to, to, yeah. to a fun little piece of news we had to talk about. Uh, here's another fun little piece of news. Yeah, uh, people so, are getting Half Life Two on their Switch. Yes, it's not uh, on the after, Switch. No, but they found a way. Uh, after the Nintendo Direct Mini Valve released Portal Companion Collection, a bundle of Portal and Portal Two for the Nintendo Switch within 24 hours. Uh, hackers have already found out that this bundle essentially contains a hidden game within its code, and it's none other than Half-Life 2. Whoa. Uh, Twitter user Oatmeal Dome shared that they had found Half-Life 2 in its entirety, save for a few things like maps and music, within the game's files. Oatmeal Dome pointed out that uh, that Portal having bits of... P Oatmeal Dome pointing <laughs> out that uh, Portal having bits and pieces of Half-Life 2 is expected because Portal 1 is just a fancy mod for Half-Life 2. However, they also found larger chunks like NPCs and voice clips that don't have any correlation to Portal. In fact, there are so many pieces that they were able to fully mod Half-Life 2 onto the Switch using the fragments hidden within Portal. Of course, the version of Half-Life 2 they constructed via Portal isn't quite up to par with its PC predecessor, 
Uh, Omeal Dome, Dome noted that they edited out load times and built a bypass for crashes. Uh, that being said, it runs impressively smoothly for a mod constructed out of another game. Uh, yeah. So that's fun that Half-Life 2 is technically on the Switch. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this guy, Oatmeal Dome, is always breaking stuff like this. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why I didn't follow him. Uh, it, yeah, it, he, it he has a video. Th- he has a video of it straight up playing Half-Life 2. Yeah. It leads me to think that... Um, that they def- that they that they at least tested Half Life Two for the Switch, mm-hmm. see if that that can work on there. Maybe it wasn't ready in time. Maybe the game was too big to port easily. But Portal and Portal Two, Portal Two might might have been easier. Uh, so they did that instead. Uh, maybe this means that Half Life Two will come to Switch at some point in time, which would be great. I'd love to play Half Life Two again. Maybe they did something with Orange Box. Um, maybe. My understanding is that Half Life Two is like an insanely well developed game, right? Yeah, and like the engine it has is insanely well developed. So, like, I'm not surprised yeah. that uh, getting some of it to work on the Switch means that a lot of it is going to run just fine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. But honestly, I think that there's more market for Portal than there is for Half Life Two on the Switch. Half Life Two has been on everything. Uh, well, it hasn't been on Switch. So I think people putting it on Switch... Valve putting it on Switch would be a good idea. Mm-hmm. But now, like... See, the Steam Deck kind of screws everything up. Mm-hmm. Because on the one hand, I, I would understand if Valve only wants you to play Half-Life 2 <clears throat> on Steam Deck. If you're going to play it portably. However, Valve has never really been like all that into exclusivity. Because like... Half Life Two is on Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, Left for Dead, uh, both of them launched on 360 and PS3. Uh, Portal, uh, Portal Two launched on PS3, 360, along with PC. Right. So, like, I I don't know. Oh no, Portal Two yeah, was I, I PS3 and 360. Yeah. Did I not say that? I think you said PS2. Um, right. Well. You, you, you see what I'm saying here. Like, they've launched their games on console in addition to on PC. So, right. like, I, I, on the one hand, I can see why they want to put their games on Switch specifically. But by the same token, if they're putting Portal on Switch, that leads me to think that they could put all their stuff on Switch. I think that Portal 2 is a little newer and, and is a little more synonymous with consoles than Half-Life 2 was. So I, I think that people are, would be more interested in a Portal 2 than they would in a Half-Life 2. I'm not saying that they shouldn't yeah. put Half-Life 2. I just think that there's more market for a Portal 2. Also, Portal 1 came out in 2007. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, way after Half-Life 2 even came out. So even Portal Half-Life- 1 is a newer game. Well, Half-Life 2 came out in 2000, 2004. Yeah. So it's three years after uh, Half Life Two. Yeah. Wait. Yes. I looked it up already. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know you don't trust me, but I looked it up already. I'm uh, no, because I've that, that, wow, only three years. Because I mean, okay, I mean, isn't Portal One a isn't Portal One a a, a Half Life One mod? No, it's a Half Life Two mod. Oh well, that makes more sense then. You know what it is? Because all right, so it's three years between. Half-Life 2 and Portal 1. Uh, Portal 2 was included in the orange box, which for those of you who don't know, that was a collection of Half-Life 2, its two uh, episode episodic expansions, Team Fortress 2 and Portal. The reason why I keep thinking it was much longer is because the wait between a Half-Life Episode 1 and Episode 2 was very long, yes. much longer than it should have been for an episodic uh, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Okay. Uh, your package RCA to BNC coaxial adapter will be delivered tomorrow. Nice. Uh, anyway, 
uh yeah so i mean don't expect to be playing half-life 2 on your switch unless you decide you want to you want to do some development breaking yeah <laughs> i mean unless this is a sign that valve is trying to put half-life 2 on switch in which case let's let's wait and see what happens here it seems that like all be, they have to do is press a button and then play through the game and make sure everything works <laughs> yeah <laughs> it seems like it wouldn't be too hard mm -hmm. uh eric Thanks for the 52 months, Eric. How you doing? And did we read this one? Timmy Two Shoes with the four months. Take my virginity. I mean my money. I don't think we read that. No, you, we though. didn't. <laughs> uh, Return to Monkey Island creator will no longer talk about the game following abuse. I heard a little bit about this. Uh, apparently, he is known for like going on and off on twitter because he uh, yeah the criticism becomes too much and i, I understand developers have it yeah. kind of hard on on social media yeah especially when it comes to game developers and especially game developers of uh beloved classic franchises who have uh hardcore fan bases that only want the games they remember and nothing new right uh ron gilbert the creator of the particular creator of particular point and what the fuck is that word pirate piratical piratical which is not a word ron gilbert the creator of the pirate themed point and click adventure series monkey island has made the decision to stop talking about the upcoming release of return to monkey island following unwarranted abuse from so-called fans in in addition to this he has closed all comments on his blog i'm shutting down comments people are just being mean and i am having to delete personal attack comments gilbert wrote he went on to defend the upcoming release of Return to Monkey Island, Gilbert's first return to the series since 91's LeChuck's Revenge. It's an amazing game, and everyone on the team is very proud of it. Play it or don't buy play it or don't play it, but don't ruin it for everyone else, he said. I won't be posting any more about the game. The joy of sharing has been driven from me. This decision by Gilbert has been highlighted by Guybrush Threepwood Guybrush Threepwood actor uh, Dominic Armado. Uh, bang up job, everyone, he tweeted, uh, clearly sickened by the way things have turned out. I've seen a lot of passionate but polite, uh, polite adjacent discussion going on, but the comments on Ron Ron's blog were a total shit show. Uh, he went on to tweet that whatever you want Monkey Allen to be, I'm going I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that making a, this a chore rather than a joy for the de for the devs is the quickest way to ensure that it won't be anything for anybody. Uh, Gilbert had previously released a candid blog post uh, specifically addressing the new art direction that Monkey Island. Uh, has taken return to monkey island may not be the art style you wanted or were expecting but it's the art style i wanted he wrote in may uh gilbert went on to state that the game has a team of incredible artists animators uh and sound designers and programmers and testers all pouring their soul into this game and it's beautiful to see play and listen to uh following the release of return to monkey island's gameplay trailer earlier this week armado also shared his thoughts on the series new look saying that for my part i freaking love it I loved it during my playthrough in the spring, and I got has gotten a ton of polish since then. It's distinctive, it's fun, and it feels alive to me. I just adore it. He went on to say that he hopes that more than anything, that those who aren't enamored of the new look will still be able to let themselves enjoy the game, uh, as there is so much awesome shit in this game. Uh, looks like, py according to Oxford's Dictionary, piratical is a word typical of a pirate. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's a bad word. I don't like it. It's a stupid so word. So I'm not going to use it. Yeah. Uh, um, I, so I, I learned that. I learned a lot about Monkey Island after this <laughs> release. Uh, apparently, yeah. Wood's a big fan of Monkey Island. Um, apparently, there's been a fuck ton of games. And yes. they all have wildly different art styles. Yeah. That's like a thing. So first of all, if you're a fan of Monkey Island, should have expected this. Second of all... <laughs> Uh, this guy, this art style got a lot of shit when it when this trailer dropped in the Nintendo yeah. Direct. That was the first time anybody's seen anything other than the the the, the logo of this new Monkey mm -hmm. Island. I think it looks fine. I'm not a Monkey Island fan, but I yeah. don't think there's anything wrong with this art style. I think it's totally fine. I mean, I know we commented on it when the when the trailer launched uh, from mm -hmm. the Nintendo Direct, and at least for my part, I mentioned that it looks radically different from all the other monkey island titles um because even like you said the art's different from game to game but there's like a sort of weird like consistency through each of them 
this one is like the biggest departure by far from what all the other games look like. I guess I'm just shocked. I mean, I'm shocked, but not that shocked. We live in a post Wind Waker world where like radically different art styles for a game series should not be the biggest deal in the world because Wind Waker, while yes, it didn't look like uh, Ocarina of Time or that one Space World demo that everybody wanted, uh, Mm -hmm. wound up to be a lot of people's favorite Zelda game. Uh, And yet I'm not surprised because this is the internet. And if it doesn't look like the thing I liked as a kid, I'm going to hate it. (laughs) It sucks to sit and make something for a few years and then you put it out there and people just shit all over it. (laughs) Yeah. It's unfortunate. For like superficial reason. Because like the art style is kind of a superficial reason for not liking Mm -hmm. a game. It's, It's unfortunate that art style is so important in video games. Like, yeah. like, uh, you can have great game mechanics, but if, 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 if it's ugly, uh, people aren't going to play it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say this is ugly. I wouldn't say anything bad about it. I think it's yeah. totally fine. Pretty even, I would say. Yeah. It's just, it's different. It's different. When I yeah. when I picture now again I'm not a Monkey Island fan but when I picture Monkey Island in my head I think of like uh, uh that guy that freaking game that freaking uh arcade game that dungeon something that arcade Dragon's game Dragon's Lair Dragon's Lair I think of that I think of that art style when I think of Monkey Island which is very wrong <laughs> <laughs> I mean this is what this yeah that guy didn't work yeah. on Monkey Island ever. No, no, that's Don Bluth. He, uh, he worked on like movies, and then he did Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. I think is the other one. Yeah, Space Ace is the other one. Yeah, I remember yeah. Space Ace. I, thought I, I, yeah. thought I did. I, thought I mean, he worked on Monkey, Monkey Island. Island I'm sure, like, is trying to emulate the style of those like classic Disney animated films, right? Right. While also trying to be, you know, a classic pirate adventure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I, I get the confusion. So yeah, I don't see. I think people are. It's unfortunate. People are. People are mean on the internet. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Grand Theft Auto. Yes. Uh, Red Dead Redemption GTA Four Remaster shelved after GTA Trilogy debacle. Uh, Where is it? Following recent rumors, Kotaku can confirm via its source that Rockstar Games is currently focusing on developing Grand Theft Auto 6 and has shelved all remakes following the poor reception of Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition. Yesterday, a tweet from Tez, an often reliable and trusted GTA insider, caught the attention of many Rockstar fans. According to the tweet, Red Dead Redemption and GTA 4 remasters are no longer on the table possibly due to the horrible mess that was last year's GTA Trilogy remakes. While some question if this was true, uh, it can be confirmed that Tez's tweets are accurate and line up with what the reporter has heard. Uh, According to the sources with knowledge of Rockstar's plans and future projects, the publisher is hoping that folks will forget about all the critically critically panned and botched classic GTA remasters released last year while it focuses on while it folks focuses most of its resources and energy on its next big game, Grand Theft Auto 6, which Rockstar earlier this year confirmed was in development. However, the current plan is to get GTA 6 finished and out the door. Um, this reporter was told that Red Dead Redemption and GTA 4 remasters aren't entirely out of the scope and could still happen in the future after GTA 6 ships. Uh, last year, in, uh, in reporting... In, in a report confirming the existence of then rumored Grand Theft Auto trilogy remasters, um, it was also explained at the time that Rockstar had planned to remaster Red Dead Redemption. At the time of the report, the idea of remastering Red Dead Redemption had been on the table for the publisher for a few years already, but now, in the wake of last year's remasters flopping and the demand for GTA 6 growing, the publisher has shifted plans again and is moving forward with the next big thing and not looking back, at least for the time being. At the time of that report, um, the reporter was told by sources that the reception and sales of the remasters will play a big factor into the future of the projects. For those who don't remember, 2021's GTA Trilogy was released in a broken state 
filled with graphical bugs and other problems that made the games hard to enjoy on any platform you played on. Uh, while updates fixed many of the issues, the remastered the remastered art and menus still left many players unhappy. It also didn't help that in the lead up to announcing the remaster trilogy, Rockstar and Take Two went after old fan mods and projects, angering a community who could have stepped in to help fix the botch releases. As for when to expect GTA 6, uh, none of the sources could share any specific details, but it seems that for now, at least, it seems that the plan uh, is to move forward and hope that people forget about the past. Uh, honestly, good. <laughs> honestly, hurry up and, and make Grand Theft Auto 6 already. Uh, good and not good. This kind of goes back to what I was saying about how uh, game companies... They, they literally say in this article, they want you to forget about the past and focus on the present and basically the future. And that's what pretty much all game companies do. They uh -huh. don't want you to experience, you know, their classic games. That's old news. What are you, a caveman? <laughs> Enter the 21st century. We have cell phones and fire now. Um, focus on GTA 6. I get wanting to focus more on GTA 6 than the older stuff. But at the same time, uh, GTA 4... And Red Dead Redemption 2 are much more modern games. GTA 4 has a PC port. So that can be uh, converted over to modern systems much more easily than the PS2 games could have been. And Red Dead Redemption 1, while there's never been a PC port, that's still running on the same engine as Grand Theft Auto 4. So porting that over to a modern system should, you know, shouldn't, you know, shouldn't be as easy as GTA 4, but it, you know, it should be a lot easier than San Andreas was. I feel okay. like they could have get, gotten this done. I feel like they could have gotten this done with an external, with a better external studio than the one they got to do the remaster. I mean, maybe they wanted to do it internally, which I get, I, but like I, rockstar owns a lot of studios take two owns a lot of studios they could have put anybody on this i i think the tragedy here is that they were they they had something and now they're scrapping it that's the tr right tragedy yeah that we could have had this and it's not working out uh i think there's something wrong they're probably shitty and <laughs> and it's just not worth it i think it's more worth it to move on to the next generation I don't think these games need a remaster that badly. I, I even the original Red Dead Redemption is uprezzed on the on the Xbox. It's Xbox. Well, it's Xbox One X enhanced. Well, yes, but by the same token, if you wanted to play Red Dead Redemption right now, without digging out your old consoles, the only place you can get it is on an Xbox One. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not on. It's not on PS4 or PS5. It's not on PC. It's not on Switch. So if you wanted to play the game right now with current-gen hardware, you would need an Xbox One or an Xbox Series X. Just do that then. But th that's one console that's, avail that's available. For no, I'm you know, saying, I'm saying fucking put it on the PlayStation Store, even if it's just a, a, a PS3 game, and, right. and put it on PC. Even if it's running it all, it all shit, you know, like that doesn't. We don't need it to be remastered, right? Especially if you're gonna do as bad of a job as you did the trilogy. I don't want yeah. that. I don't want the, the friggin' ray tracing. I don't need that. Yeah. Just, just friggin', just, just put it. Just make the game available. We don't need it to have the fancy graphics. It's already a beautiful right. game anyway. Yeah. It just it sucks that you know. It, it sucks that they had to move on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing they were just spooked by the reception to the trilogy. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, I they, think they, they were spooked, and up. also yeah. this is bad. They're, they're looking at, <laughs> at, they're giving a second thought, and they're like, maybe, maybe we did a bad job here too. Yeah, maybe people won't just forgive us because we're rock star. We make Grand Theft Auto games. <laughs> yeah. I, I think something internally probably went wrong. Um, yeah. Or, or was was it confirmed or not that these remasters were being done by the same people? Uh, that, I didn't say who was who was making it, but it, it sounded like it was being made internally by Rockstar. Okay. Yeah. 
Usually when Rockstar does things themselves, they're testing things out for a Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, And Grand Theft Auto, the Grand Theft Auto trilogy was outsourced by a different company. I forgot the name of the company. Right. I was thinking Uh, maybe they worked on this also and they're finding problems there. Uh, But I don't know. Either way, or maybe, you know what? You know what probably happened? They saw the reception to the Grand Theft Auto trilogy. Mm-hmm. And they were like, I guess people just don't want remakes. And they didn't realize that that remake was just very bad. <laughs> Grove Street Games. That's who made the the trilogy. Uh, they, did they do mobile stuff? They did the mobile ports of Grand Theft Auto 3 and right, right, right. Vice City and San Andreas. And they basically just ported the mobile versions over to current gen systems. That's that's unfortunate. That's what it was. Yeah. They also did Bully. Yes. iOS and Android. <laughs> uh okay. So I don't know. I just I I think they gotta hurry up with the uh, they gotta put a lot into Grand Theft Auto Six. That obviously is gonna be a very big Yeah, that's obviously game. gonna be like the biggest game of all time. Yeah. All right, real quick, Atari fifty. Okay. Should I be interested uh, in this at all? Uh you probably won't, but I think it's cool. So basically, they're gonna uh, the company is gonna put out Atari 50, the anniversary collection, classic uh, compilation of games stretching beyond the standard game collection bundles we've seen in the past, with aspirations of serving as a visual interactive museum to paint a picture of just how influential and important Atari was, particularly through the nascent years of video game of the video game industry. Um, at its core, it will deliver more than 90 playable games in one forty dollar package. Players can expect classic and retro titles from six generations of hardware, uh, including the 2600, the 5200, the 7800, the Atari ST, the Jaguar, and the Lynx, all with emulation created by renowned retro revivalist Digital Eclipse. This is the first time the Jaguar and Lynx games will be playable on modern consoles. The team at Digital Eclipse, best known for the Mega Man Legacy Collection, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, Disney Afternoon Collection, and the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection has plenty of experience bringing forward uh, classics from yesteryear. So it's going to feature, it's not only going to feature, like I I said, 90 games from Atari's complete history in the video game space from all of their consoles. But in addition to that, Digital Eclipse has created six new games that pay homage uh, to or revisit classics from Atari's past. For example, the developer created the fourth chapter of the Sword Quest series, Air World, and made a modern 3D isometric adventure based on Haunted House. Atari 50 will also include a Vector Sector, a title that celebrates the Vector era of gaming with combinations of various arcade uh, classics, including Asteroids and Tempest in one experience. Um, so yeah, so not only is this going to be a collection of classic Atari games, it's going to be, it's going to have a lot of, not a lot. It's going to have uh, newer games inspired by the classics. It's going to have uh, the final game in the Sword Quest series, which was never released. Uh, and it's going to serve, it's going to have like documentary videos and museum articles and things like that to basically surface as a, a living history of Atari overall. It's positioning itself to be the ultimate uh, retro collection. Uh, for for everybody who wants to play Atari games, <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> forty dollars is not bad. Uh, is this a this is this is just like a like a like a like a like a collection of games, right? Like like this is just like a like a like a it's PC it's a like collection. a PC download or or it, this isn't a console, right? No, no, it's uh, it's coming to PlayStation Five, uh, oh. Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and the Atari VCS console. Oh wow, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of cool. That thing. Um. Uh, so yeah, no, I just think it's, I just think it's cool that this looks like it's going to be the game, the retro gaming collection to end all retro gaming collections, regardless of what you think about the quality of for Atari, Atari games. Atari games. <laughs> Well, yes. Okay, maybe a better choice of words was this could set the standard for what 
retro gaming collections should be in the future. Because they're putting all this time and effort into it. Uh, I mean, imagine, imagine like if this was done with like Sonic Origin, where they had like full uh, documentary videos about the making of Sonic and and the history of Sonic Team. If it had a new game included in it, if it had like I don't know more quality of life improvements and stuff, if it had just beyond like the one selection of Sonic games, you see what I'm saying? This is the retro games collection for boomers <laughs> yes <laughs> yes okay this is a great retro game collection for games i don't give a shit about <laughs> <laughs> i never once thought you know what i need 50 atari games <laughs> what name well, a game this- here that you're excited to play well they haven't announced all the games in this collection Okay. However, mm-hmm. however, do you know what one of the launch titles for the Atari Lynx was? A no. first party launch title for the Atari Lynx? No. It's a little game called Chips Challenge. <gasps> I was just going to say, I was just going to say in the trailer, there's Cliff Blazinski playing something that looked like Chips Challenge. <laughs> so if Chips Challenge is in this game... I think I think Bob Wolf was just just uh, laid down forty dollars for a. I'm not paying for forty dollars for Chips Challenge. First of all, I have it on Steam, which is probably the better version anyway. And second probably. of all, I definitely didn't pay forty dollars for Chips <laughs> Challenge. Yeah, I found a long play of Chips Challenge. I think this is actually it looks the same as the PC version. I got I got a ten ten second ahead. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. I think this is cool, and I think is this what this it's like to not have YouTube in. Premium. I'm freaking watching two 15 second ads. Yeah, life's at why it sucks. Oh, this life's a toilet. Don't you have a family? You're on my family plan. <laughs> I am, I am, but I had to use regular YouTube a, a little bit ago, and it was awful. I oh, this what looks it was like this looks horrible. <laughs> Chips challenge for the links looks. God awful. Well, yeah, it's the Lynx. Have you ever played a Lynx? It's awful. <laughs> no, I've I never have actually. It's, Here we go, baby. This is the uprezzed premium way to play Chips Challenge here on the <laughs> PC, my guy. Here it is, Chips Challenge. Now, is there audio? No, there's no audio. <laughs> Wait, do I have it <laughs> muted? Nope. That's just no. Audio. I think the original version of Chips Challenge had no audio. Um. <laughs> but but you could turn it on and the audio is fucking bad. <laughs> yeah. I think they released it and they were like, you know what? This audio is bad. We'll turn it off by default. Anyway, Chips Challenge, great game. Everybody give it a try. I used to play yeah. the fuck out of Chips Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, now, this I want to talk about because I want to do what this guy did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently, a Nintendo fan buys forty thousand dollars in Nintendo stock just to ask them a question about F Zero. As reported by Yahoo News, the anonymous user who goes by Amiji on Japan purchased a hundred shares of Nintendo at uh, fifty six hundred yen, fifty six thousand yen, which is about four hundred seventeen dollars in February, so he could attend a company shareholder meeting to ask the critical question. I have been playing Nintendo games since I was a child. Of, uh, sorry, I've been playing Nintendo games since I was a child. Memoji answered when asked by the insider why he did it. Uh, along uh, among all, the sense of speed in F Zero is the best. Let me summarize the article because I I yeah, know everything ahead. about everything here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 once. I want to find the quote that you find the quote. Uh, so okay. basically. If Nintendo has investors meetings every once in a while, I think it's annually, but I think they might do it more than annually, maybe quarterly. I don't know. But every once in a while, Nintendo will have an investor meeting and they have their top investors uh, ask questions to them that they can respond to because they're people that give them money to, to and, and they want to make sure their money is being used right. So yeah. this guy knew that and he was like, if I spend $40,000, I will be one of those top investors and I will be able to ask Mr. Furukawa uh, about my favorite franchise. 
This guy was just a guy who had 40K burning a hole in his pocket and he he rolled with it. Now, it doesn't mean if you spend 40,000, you're guaranteed to get in the investor chair. You have to be one of the top investors. Well, it's it says here you need to own a minimum of shares in Nintendo to be allowed to attend the shareholder meeting, but that doesn't guarantee you get to ask a question. That's uh, considered a bonus. Yes. Uh, I thought it was just like, these are like the top 10 investors. And like if somebody no, th- if somebody gave forty thousand and one dollars, then you're out. You're you're kicked out. No, this was just this this dude just got lucky and was able to ask a question. Okay, interesting. So then maybe I won't do it because then I'm gonna spend forty thousand dollars and then I'm gonna not be able to ask a question. I well, I saw yeah. this article and I sent it to Wood and I said Nintendo Nintendo Podcast Patreon goal. <laughs> give us what do you say? Give us forty k and we'll uh, yeah potentially ask. Uh, Nintendo, how to pronounce the word Mario? <laughs> Just waste everybody's time and money and forty thousand dollars. The thing yeah. is, though, you're buying <laughs> stock, so you can just sell it after that. You don't, you're not like really going to lose any money. True. Uh, did you find the exact quote of the question that he asked? Uh, I, I'm looking. I can't find the exact quote. Uh, where the hell? I found that. Nah, well, well, the response was by Shinya Takahashi, who said, we are always uh-huh. considering how to develop new titles and remakes that can be enjoyed by many players. And that's literally, it's literally $40,000 well, well, $40, no, uh, got you. Furukawa, the company's president, had said, uh, it is realistically difficult to develop new titles and remakes, ah. including sequels for every Nintendo game that people request, but we are very grateful and appreciate the... Uh, I lost it. We are very grateful and appreciate the ex- ex- expectations. The expectations our fans have for our games. So uh, $40,000 and a non-answer. Yeah. Obviously, this guy wanted an F-Zero game. And he's like, where's my fucking F-Zero? And they're like, uh, too bad, bitch. <laughs> yeah, we're not kidding. Imagine, imagine if they were just like, we're making one. <laughs> we got, We got you. <laughs> If they're like, you give us a minute, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, real quick. Oh, I didn't see this one in the keep before. Oh, uh, I added two. Okay. So let's let's plow through them real quick. I, I can plow through this one. Uh, so thirteen. It was a cult classic game that came out on the PS2, GameCube, and original Xbox era. It was a first person shooter. Uh, most famous for having like a really highly stylized, cel shaded comic book artwork to it. Uh, it got a remake this generation. The remake was hot garbage, uh, mm-hmm. famously because it did not retain the cel shaded comic book art style, the thing everybody likes about that game. So mm-hmm. the remake is now getting a remake. Okay. The remake, the remade remake version of the game is set for release on September 17th. That's Bob's birthday, everybody. Woo, uh, buy me this update, game. <laughs> free update for anyone who already owns the existing game on PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Uh, and the long-delayed Switch version will also arrive on that date. Uh, okay. This is a game that was like kind of a cult classic, but I remember the update, uh, the, the the remake, nobody liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's it just... You know, we, we, we've been living in a world of, like, remakes and, like, you know, remasters of old games for a while. And, you know, occasionally you'll get something good. And occasionally you got something like the GTA Remastered Trilogy or the 13 Remastered, uh, Remastered Edition that are just so borked that it kind of makes you sad for the state of game preservation. But it's at least it's good that they're trying to fix it, <laughs> like, I... completely fix it. I talked about this on the Nintendo podcast, uh, the the thirteen remake, because it, it's just it was just missing on the Switch. They said they were going to make it, and then they just dropped the development. Uh, yeah. The remake has a thirty three percent average rating on Metacritic, and fans weren't mm-hmm. pleased either, giving it an overwhelmingly negative average review rating on Steam. Yeah. On top of that, the remake was originally supposed to come out for the Nintendo Switch, and then it just freaking didn't. Does it, yeah. did, is this confirmed for Switch? Yeah. No. Yes? I just said it was. PS. Free update 
for PlayStation 4, Windows PC, and Xbox One, uh, the long-delayed Nintendo Switch version will also arrive on that date. On your birthday! <laughs> wow! Everybody buy me this game. I will never play it. <laughs> we have the original on PS2. It's fine. I thought you liked it. I like the art style. Oh. You know what it was? It was clunky. I mean, it was a PS2 first-person shooter, so those are like clunky to begin with, but this right. was particularly clunky. I think the remake was just as clunky and people just didn't like it. Also, well, it was just as clunky. And uh, look at it. <laughs> it doesn't look like 13. I think I get this game confused with Killer 7 a lot. Maybe. That was also uh, had a unique art style, too. Uh, anyway, Sony is reportedly hiring an engineer to bring PlayStation 3 emulation to PlayStation 5. Is it MVG? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, over rec- over the recent years, I uh, have suggested that Sony may be bringing PS3 emulation to the console. Optimistic, uh, a, a job listing was basically posted uh, specifically referencing classics. Some are still holding out hope that this means uh, PS3 emulation. Uh, yeah, so, so basically, Sony is hi- Sony is like hiring uh, an engineer who will specifically for getting classic games up and running on the PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five, and uh, people are are hoping this means that PS Three games will be included in that, uh, and that means that there will be actual emulation rather than cloud streaming of PS Three games. Yeah, so. Uh, the PlayStation uh, Plus Premium Collection got a little bit of flack because the PlayStation 3 games are are cloud streaming only. Uh, And uh, some people, I think MVG, said that was just sheer laziness. uh, So PlayStation 3 emulation is hard to achieve, but people like MVG are like, if if Sony cared at all, they would be able to figure it out pretty easily. And that's mm-hmm. kind of true. If they just shoved some money into it, it would work just fine. But uh, the PlayStation Plus Premium has a fuck ton of PlayStation 3 games. And that probably wouldn't be possible if they emulated all of them. They'd probably want to make sure that they all work perfectly. But that's you know what? That's right. not true. Because some of the stupid PlayStation 2 games don't emulate that good on, <laughs> on the PlayStation 5. The first one I opened up was uh, Ape Escape, and it, it didn't run good at all. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, I'm glad that they're not sticking to cloud streaming. I'm glad that they're going to try to get native emulation working on there. Yeah. Uh, There was also a report that Sony filed a patent for getting PlayStation 3 peripherals um, up and running on PlayStation 5. That'd be sick. That that includes things like the iToy, uh, the original PlayStation Move controllers, the PSP Go, um, and several other uh, random assortment of crap. Uh, all right, last thing we want to talk about. I put this in right before we started because I thought it was interesting. Yuji Naka erases a former co-worker and Sonic <laughs> co-creator Nato Oshima from Team Photo. Uh, here's the photo. And it's, it, I guess it's uh, it's from the launch of Knights. Happy birthday, Knights. 26 years ago, Knights was announced at Sega Saturn's new software presentation. Bomberman and Enemy Zero were announced together. I've recently been flying FPV in the sky with a drone like Knights. Uh, and here's the picture. And one guy is just blacked out with a marker. <laughs> like, like, a, like a petty high schooler. Yeah. Like, obviously, there was supposed to be a person there. Yeah, and it's very strange. And then obviously yeah. people were like, "Um, what the fuck? Why did you just black a dude out?" And he clarified. So, when he made uh Balan Wonderland, Wonderworld, whatever the hell the name of the game is. Wonder uh, Wonderworld. Wonderwall. When he made Balan Wonderwall, <laughs> uh he got fired from the project before they released the game and then the game released unfinished. Uh, and it was really bad for him because the game is is bad and it made him look bad. Uh, yeah. Apparently, he thinks that guy got him fired. He said, <laughs> how would you feel if you were suddenly removed from a game that you had worked hard on for over two years and when you went to court, you found out that they had been talking about me. But... <laughs> so he's using like a translation app. 
So yeah. the translation's a little weird. Uh <laughs> You found out that they had been talking about me behind my back in court documents, and that is why I was removed from the game. Uh, game creators create games with care for the people who play them. Don't you think that people and companies that cannot take care of games are no good? Instead of talking behind my back, don't you think you should tell them directly before removing them? Uh, what would you do if you were to be ill for a long time and unable to do anything because of it? And how would you feel if you were the director of an unfinished game and it was heavily criticized? So something happens. So, yeah. So he's basically saying without saying it, uh, he's basically saying, uh, fuck you, Oshima. <laughs> yeah, I'm on to you, shady uh bitch. Oshima, I mean, I have a feeling it's uh, there's problems all around. I'm not saying yeah. uh, oh, you know, yeah. Yuji Naka's in the right. He might have done something wrong also. But, uh, I mean, firing the creator of the game right before its release and using his name still to promote the game is kind of yeah. not cool yeah, I mean, and, it, it, and it, grounds it, for some legal action. It wasn't cool when Konami did it to Kojima. Right. For Metal Gear Solid, it's not cool when Square does it to uh, Yuji Naka. Right. Uh, and yeah, I don't know his relationship with Oshima. It sounds like uh, in the court findings when he tried to take Square to court, some he found out some shit that made him really yeah. not like this guy. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to include this because Yuji Naka is just on a, on a tear right now on social yeah. media. He doesn't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Which, you know what? Good for him. Good for him. I'm glad. Anyway, Atif, thank you for the 12 months. Hey, Bob and Will, sorry to interrupt the podcast. You, that's the whole point of, of yeah. subscriptions. <laughs> but it's been so long since I managed to catch you on here. Glad I made it. Glad to have you. Thank you for the 12 whole yeah. months. Uh, Zed Cronin, thank you for the subscription. And X, X and Daddy, thank you for the subscription. Uh, I forgot a tweet of the week, so I'm gonna <sighs> find one. But in the meantime, why don't we check out last week's Wolf Den live? Yes, uh, podcast? if you have to comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast, yes, it's the podcast now. We're a podcast now, Bob. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you have to comment on last week's Wolf Den podcast, we will answer you. Uh, if select select comments will get uh lifted by our good buddy Fred. And here is the first one from Melon. Come for the video game and comic discussion. Stay. For the ball grooming talk, of course. Ah, uh, yes. Podcast sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, get your Manscaped uh, nut sack razor over at manscapecom wolfden Use the promo code WolfDen. Uh, is that is all that true? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Jorge Rigo when he says, uh, when I eat pizza, I eat until there's a strip of toppings that is about as wide as the crust, and then I fold it back on the crust and eat it like a little pizza hot dog. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> when I eat pizza, I eat until there's a strip of toppings that is about as wide as the crust, and then fold that back on the crust. Oh, so so you can enjoy the crust... With some of the pizza. All right, you know what? Not yeah, a bad. That works. That works. No. I'll allow it. All right, I found the. Uh, I'm gonna. We'll do the tweet of the week after the the this okay. sort of thing. Uh, Clockworth Cl Clockworth clone. It's not a Wolf Den podcast if the old Wolf Den live intro noise doesn't go off randomly at some point after the show has started. Yeah. So uh, that probably happened today. Also. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I click the wrong thing on OBS, and in today's case, I just watched an older Wolf Den uh, podcast, <laughs> and that's yeah. what happened. Uh, anyway, uh, what else we got? Uh, we got Hater. Mohammed Hater. Yeah. Jokes on you, Manscaped, that making Bob read a statement when Bob doesn't know how to read. <laughs> it's true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, Lemming77 Goad says, don't overwork yourself, buddy, although the video came out great. Uh, did I overwork myself? 
You always overwork yourself. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm ahead of schedule this week. Oh. You I feel, feel like I, I already filmed a roll. No, I feel wow. like I should be doing more. <laughs> the other day when I was, uh, I, fi- I also filmed the freaking uh, uh, ad before I went to Long Island. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like rushing to the train and I was like, why am I rushing? I have time. <laughs> What is happening? I I just feel like I always got to be doing stuff, you know? Right. Anyway. Uh, you know what? Tweet of the week. Do Tweet it. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Now, there's a problem with this week's Tweet of the Week. Mm-hmm. It's got spoilers for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Ah, I've seen it. So... Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you uh, audio, Will. Uh, okay. I have not seen Doctor Strange. However, this has been spoiled for me already. So I'm going to play it now. Come back in exactly one minute, okay? If you don't want to be spoiled. Here it is right now. Oh, I have the site muted. Charles Xavier. Our final member. Professor Charles Xavier. Hold on, I- so it's so it's professor x grinding a rail in his little car his little car <laughs> thing. that's it that's all it is i see it that's good uh, anyway, oh, that's a good time. <laughs> Mega Man says, "Wait, did that actually happen? <laughs> it looks, it looks real." Yeah. Uh, kind of wish it did. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys real quick in the chat yes. here. Uh, yeah, Eric, it's safe. You can come back. We're done. Talking you can go about back. Doctor Strange. Yes. It turns out the real multiverse of Nadne was inside of Doctor Strange the whole time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ethel says, so does ahead of schedule mean going to bed at 4 a.m. instead of 6 a.m.? Yes, correct. That is correct. <laughs> ahead of schedule means I'm going to stay up tonight to film the B-roll and not tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, the Real House said, Bob, did Will get his gift? No. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put it? Is it in uh, my backpack still? No, it wouldn't be in here. Is it? We traded Manscaped underwear because Manscaped gave me Bob size and Bob had Will size, so we had to fix it. No, you just swapped them wrong. It's no, one I didn't. package. I, it's, they were... They were in the underwear was in the box. So I took the box that had the large shirt, thinking that the underwear was the corresponding size. Oh. Yeah. I I forgot they gave us shirts. <laughs> I didn't even look at my shirt. Uh I did. It's in, it's uh I'll I'll hopefully I'll have it in time for next week's Wolfton podcast. It's in the wash. Because I care about our sponsor. It's a medium shirt. I got a medium shirt. Comment on a news you said. I feel like a lot of companies just got lazy with collections and just put them in the games and call it a day. It isn't like back in the days when they actually cared to give people a good deal with their collection. I'm going to say back in the day, they just fucking put the game in a collection and said, here you go. Yeah. I mean... (sighs) There were a lot of like on his PS3, especially a lot of like collections of games from the PS2 era on there. And they were now I don't want to say they farted them out, but they were just like straight conversions. Nowadays, there's like I guess this is pressure. Everything's got to be in HD. Everything's got to yeah. be like modernized and stuff. Everything's got to have microtransactions and NFTs and bullshit. Yeah. So, so, so try- there's the pressure to up res it and shit. I mean, back in the day, yeah. it literally was just a port, and then here you go. Yeah. But now these days, people feel like they have to change some stuff. 
Sean says, let me get that play date. Sean, I have an idea. Sean is the, <laughs> he, he helped me with the Morbius thing. Sean, I right. have an idea. Listen to this idea. I came up with this idea during this podcast while Will was reading an article and I was spacing out. Listen, an OBS plugin, but every time it detects one of the channels, it switches to a camera, to a, to a, camera source that you set so if will's talking for us for more than like five seconds he comes up on the, on the screen and then when i start talking it switches to the wide and if i talk for another 10 seconds it then switches to me and it'll know based on the source of where the audio is coming from mm-hmm. get work get working on it <laughs> get working on it and then it has to have sliders for like a cool down of like how long you want it before it switches yeah make it happen it'll, make, it'll save me a lot of money and it'll make the podcast a lot better and it switches the source it doesn't have to switch the scene it just switches the source it just makes the camera it just turns on a bigger camera or it can change the scene I it, there's an option it can have options you gotta have options uh scatterbrain says sounds like you should use google meet instead of discord i think google does that already uh well it google does meet it, it there's two problems uh, well, yeah. Discord does that too. The problem is it does it too good. <laughs> like I want to be able to have both of us sometimes. Yeah. Also, Google Meet uh, only lasts about an hour unless you like pay for it. <laughs> Apparently, Zoom is the same way now. Yeah. It's 45 well, Zoom has minutes. always been like that. Yeah. Well, now I do my Japanese lessons over Zoom, and now they just cut yeah. out after 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Manscaped really works. I use their ball waxing kit all the time. Thank you, Luke Anton. Yeah. We were explaining that to our parents, what Manscaped was. Uh, that our was mother, our mother, like, it's hard to explain modern things to our mother. And this was like something she was really having a hard time understanding. So, so both of our parents had a hard time because at first I called it a ball razor. Yes. And the, just the concept of shaving your balls was foreign to them. <laughs> But then on top of that, uh, our mother thought that it was a razor with like a ball head. Yes. And she wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, ooh, I want that. Give me that. Because I guess that's like, you know, if you're shaving your legs and stuff, like, I mean. Yeah. That makes sense, kind of. And then we explained what it was. She's like, ah, ah, <laughs> like horrified. Yeah. Bob, do you still have a streaming schedule aside from podcasts? Uh, I don't advertise my schedule, but I normally stream at night around this time. And uh, I usually try to stream on Thursdays and Sundays. Um, anyway, listen, guy razors work better sometimes. There's no difference between a girl razor and a guy razor besides the color. Yeah, and uh, well, yeah, that's called the pink tax, where a regular, you know, they'll make the girl razor look all fancy and stuff, but they'll charge you like ten dollars more. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's why you have a third guy work the switchboard. That's the what I'm trying to avoid here. <laughs> False dude ones have more blades for less money. I mean, the whole razor, razor blade economy is just, it's a disaster no matter how you look at it because you buy the razor for $10, but you have to buy the razor blades for like 45 for a pack mm-hmm. of three. So Evan says that third guy is usually my role. Let Evan, listen, my idea was great, but it would not help the spawn cast at all because you guys have like nine people on. And I don't think you'll be able to switch between. Them. Oh, then then you just have to have the Discord thing switch for you anyway. Um. Uh, thank you, Mega uh, Dragon, for the eighty-three bits. Oh, bros. Yeah. By the way, is it wrong to go wirelessly with gaming tech? No. Uh, so I think we're. I know we're of two different opinions of this. You like to be wired as much as possible. Yes. I am in the process of trying to make. All of my controllers, even my for my retro systems, wire less mm-hmm. because I I the convenience of wireless 
for me trumps the ability to plug in directly and have that direct one-to-one input. I don't necessarily need that. That's not really a priority for me. Uh, I know for you, you like the immediate response of a wired so, control. So, so, yeah, I think there's a lot less convenience in wireless because of the the, the syncing and stuff. Yeah, I will say uh, 2.4 gigahertz dongles are fantastic. So, like, if you mm-hmm. have a retro console like a SNES, I think Hyperkin makes those controllers that have the uh, the dongle that you just plug into an SNES. Yeah, and like that uh, pr- is probably fine. 8-Bit2 has them, too. I don't want to have to worry about charging it. I don't want to have to worry about syncing it. I'd much rather just plug the stupid thing in. Uh, And dongles alleviate that in some ways. That N64 controller I talked about in a a few videos ago, the the Brawler 64, the wireless one, has a dongle. Mm -hmm. The 8 bit Do fight stick that I use has a dongle, and it almost never... I never have to charge it. Um, So I do think having the dongle is a little bit more convenient in some ways. Yeah. Uh, However... Uh, I'm totally fine with wired also. Yeah. Throw houses. Retro fighters are good too. That's the brawler 64 that I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, if you have played jet set radio, are you excited about its clone bomb rush cyberpunk? Yes. yes. We are very excited Absolutely. about bomb rush. When does that come yeah. out? This year, I think should be fall. I want to say, or is it right uh, around the corner? It just says 2022. Damn. Yeah. I bought an N64 to USB adapter for my OG Brawler 64. I need it to work on Switch now. Uh, the Hyperkin one, it does work on Switch. There's no, well, it doesn't work for Nintendo Switch Online. They, There's like control configurations you could do, but it's not. It's he said not, the, it's not gonna be good. the Brawler 64. That's the Retro Fighters one. No, but he had the N64 to USB adapter for the original Brawler 64. Oh. Uh. I emulate retro on PC have been for almost 14 years now. Good for you. Good for you. Good uh, for we've you. been doing it for over 20. I first played Super Mario World on an emulator. And when I yeah, think about same. that, I'm like, I'm like, I, that must have been on like our compact Passario family computer. Yeah. <laughs> like it must have been yeah. like, I, and then you look it up and it's like, that was the dawn of emulation. Yeah. I didn't know I was but that it, ahead of ahead of that when I was freaking eleven. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it just goes to show you though, like emulation for like retro for like uh, eight and sixteen bit systems has you know it's we've been doing it for so long mm-hmm. that you know there really should be no excuse for those collections, those uh, retro re releases to be bad. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So when you see a bad one, I don't want to say Sonic Origins because that's a that's a whole other can of worms. But like you you know a bad one when you see one, and yeah. there's no excuse for those games to be bad. Now Kate says I first played Ocarina on an emulator. Now I'll say that uh, N64 games, especially back in the day, they were they were the emulation was rough. I wouldn't say yeah. that uh, that was like a. That wasn't like a gold standard for how emulation yeah. of, of 3D games should be. Yeah. I mean, it's better now, but even it's still, now. it's rough. Yeah. Uh, anyway, do we have any more notifications here? Oh, wow. Yeah. Anonymous gifted a bunch of subs. Wow. Thank you very much, Mr. Anonymous. Yes. Do uh, you still wear V for Vendetta masks, or have you moved on to another Alan Moore property? I saw in Target the other day in the toy section, it was a mask. I don't remember what stupid Gen Z video game it's from, but it was straight up an anonymous mask, like legally distinct from the V for Vendetta mask. But like, it wasn't like Fortnite or Roblox or anything like that. It wasn't Mr. Robot? No, it wasn't Mr. Robot. Because they have that. (laughs) Yeah, no, I know they have that, but like... It was an anonymous mask. It was legally distinct from the V for Vendetta Guy Fox mask. But it was in the kids' toy section of Target next to the Halo figures. Interesting. I don't remember what it was for. Uh, I don't remember if we thanked Zed, Cronin, and X, and Daddy. But thank you for the subscriptions. Anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for hanging out. 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us as all Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective podcasts. thanks for hanging out guys i'll probably stream next on thursday if i'm really ahead of schedule and bored tomorrow i might stream tomorrow but uh i don't want to get anybody's hopes up because i would also just like to sleep <laughs> uh thanks for being here i appreciate you now why don't you just go watch aj he is what do you think he's doing we'll take a guess what he's doing uh probably something pokemon related kind of he's playing <laughs> smash oh, okay uh everybody go watch him uh and i will see y'all later goodbye bye